All right, I'm gonna show you how to make some cottage cheese and potato pockets. This is a great recipe. You can whip it out super fast using some leftovers. It's delicious. Flour. I'm gonna use plain flour. We're making essentially like a flatbread, but I'm not using self-raising flour or yeast or any of that stuff. It's a flatbread that goes crispy, and so I'm not interested in it in any leavening, in any rising whatsoever. Got a little bit of butter. Use your fingers and just rub it together. Now, this is important because you want the butter to go as through this as you can. This is what my grand Kelly used to do. She was an expert at it. Somehow her fingers moved much faster than mine and she ended up being able to do it in like three seconds. Me, not as good. That's why we have pastry chefs. Once you've learned how to make this pastry, you can actually put anything inside. We had a, a Chinese one night and there was some shredded beef leftovers and I went straight in the inside with some fresh coriander mixed up with cottage cheese. You wouldn't think it would work in a million years. It was unbelievable. Milk, not much. Just pour it into the middle and then just mix from the inside out and just bring it into our dough. Now, ideally, you wanna rest this dough for about an hour. Otherwise, it will be pretty difficult to roll out or spring back on you. So get that on your board. This is the, uh, the exercise bit for the day, kneading. That is how you do it. That stretching motion is what gives any kind of dough or pastry, I guess, a shortness. With this, you want to give it four or five minutes of solid kneading. Like I say, I consider this to be exercise. Is this exercise load? Surely, for me. 100%. It feels like I've been needing forever. Honestly, I've done the minimum because I'm lazy. So <laughs> it's five minutes minimum. And you can see it's starting to get smooth. It's elastic -y. you can see it's springing back, which is why we need to rest the dough. If you try to roll it out now into a circle, it would just go straight back in again. So trust me, go make yourself a cup of tea, have a whiskey, maybe a little Negroni, Aperol spritz if it's a nice day. Either way, give the dough a chance to rest. Like there. Put it in a little bowl, cover it in cling film and give it an hour. Fortunately, I've got a loving wife who's going to bring me the one that I did earlier. Aren't you, Lozzie? Yeah. Loz? I'm on it. Catch. <laughs> Thank you. This is what it looks like after an hour. It's sort of shiny, much softer to the touch. Some spinach that we had left over from the other night. I'm just going to run my knife through that a little bit before I put it in the bowl. Um, then I've got some thyme here. Potatoes and thyme love each other. And I'm just going to finely chop it. Today we're going to use the Andy Allen method of uh, microplaning. I wonder where he is. I miss Andy. Where are you, Andy? Come on, mate. And then I've got some potatoes left over. I actually stole this from the leftovers on the kids. Last but not least, our cottage cheese. Superb! Be generous with your salt. I always am. I'm gonna use some white pepper and just fold it through together. You don't wanna work the mix too much. Otherwise, it'll end up having a weird texture, right? Okay, some honey. Did you know that honey is actually bee vomit? You know that? Pretty cool, hey. Uh, turn your stove on. What I want to do is bring the honey up to a boil. I'm going to add a little bit of salt into my honey. And Loz's favorite, bird's eye chili. <laughs> the beautiful perfume that comes from chilies will go all the way through the honey and it's like double delicious. So, and it goes. Rolling pin. I'm just turning it around. Hey, it's going to start raining. How cool is that? How does rain impact your dough? Rain's sort of like, it tends to make your dough wet. It's not ideal sometimes, you know, but if you've used too much flour, I guess, rain's great. You can see I've made a very poor job of making this into a circle. Look at that. That's how the real pizza guys do it. They go like that. Oh. Was that circus music you were just doing? I am gonna put half of my mix in the middle. So roughly 10, 10 centimeters round. We're gonna bring the pastry into the middle, like that, one. And that last one, just make sure that you're covering the filling. 
Don't be shy with the butter. Lois, you'd be happy to hear that, wouldn't you? Extra butter. Is that why I said thank you? Let that do its thing. Our uh, honey is cooled down from earlier. Just get it straight into your plate so as everyone can get into it, right? Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. All right, we're just gonna whip this off. Now, I kinda cut this into fours. I kinda, I kinda like, when it's too small, it doesn't feel generous. So, I kinda like the size of it, but look at the filling. The cottage cheese is just warm through and just becomes even more rich and delicate. Crispy on the top, looking superb. So just get them onto your board, add your honey, dip it. Just get it into that spiced honey. Look at that. Oh. Thanks for watching, and if you liked that, please click subscribe because there's plenty more where that came from. Also, if there's a recipe that you actually want to see me make, chuck it in the comments below and we'll get around to it. Thanks for watching.